This is First Coast News on your side. Well, thanks for joining us on First Coast News. I'm Jeff Vallon. While many of you might have been watching the Jaguars today, lots more have been watching the water get deeper in the streets, like in this video from St. Augustine and rougher at the beach. Here's the scene in Ponte Vedra, where beaches that have long been hit by erosion are getting battered all over again. This is the second straight day we've seen heavy waves and white caps across our beaches. It's about the same in St. Simons Island. Viewer Brent Davis shot this video telling us Tidewater came up into his house and it hasn't been like this since Hurricane Irma three years ago. The riverfront in St. Mary's, Georgia is also looking soggy this evening as routine flooding there is not stopping. And in the South Shores neighborhood in Duval County, extra water in the St. Johns River means extra high tides, filling the streets with flowing water as the tide moved in today. We have live team coverage tonight. Kaylee Tracy is standing by with a look at how these floods are having a major impact on neighborhoods across the First Coast. First, though, let's get to Lauren Routenkrantz with Jacksonville's most accurate forecast. Now, your most accurate forecast from the First Coast News weather team, sponsored by AC Designs. Thank you very much, Jeff. And man, what some incredible video we did get across the First Coast. Thank you to all of our viewers who safely sent those in. We've got Tropical Storm Beta, which is across the Gulf of Mexico. We've got high pressure building up to our north. We've also got that stationary front across South Florida. And yes, there's more, an area of low pressure that is moving near Lake Okeechobee over the Florida Peninsula as well. All of this working together to create that coastal nor'easter for us. And guess what? It's not over just yet. We're going to continue to see those high levels of water, especially during times of high tide. So the coastal flooding going to be a concern along the beaches, the St. John's River Basin, of course, just flood prone and low lying areas in general. High tide tonight, right around 11 o'clock or so at the beaches, between 1 and 2 o'clock, depending on where you are in downtown Jacksonville. It's going to continue to stay windy on Monday with those gusts up to 40, 45 miles per hour along northeast Florida beaches, and also those sustained winds of 20 to 25 miles per hour. Cooler, drier air sinking in, though, and guess what? By Tuesday, for the start of astronomical fall, we're going to even have some sunshine to welcome in the season of autumn. Check it out on our satellite and radar. You can see the wind particles just continuing to blow on shore. We've got a couple of downpours, mainly in St. John's and Flagler counties, and that's where we're going to continue to see that uh, flood risk as well, especially during times of high tide. But they've had uh, quite a bit of rainfall in the past couple of days here. And all of these storm reports, they include things like coastal flooding, the heavy rainfall reports, the uh, even non thunderstorm storm wind gusts up to again 40 50 miles per hour so it has been quite a rough weekend to say the least and if you're maybe in Valdosta Waycross Lake City you're saying quite a different story out there but you're probably hoping for the sunshine so in just a bit we're going to talk about when we'll see that and kind of break down tomorrow's gusty forecast as well. Hey Lauren, and we invite you to join our First Coast News Weather Watchers Facebook group today to share your own photos and video of whatever the weather might bring your way. Thanks to that Weather Watchers page and the Near Me page on the First Coast News app, several of you have sent us pictures and video, which we always appreciate as long as you're doing that safely. On your sides, Kaylee Tracy is live on the South Bank, and Kaylee, these impacts have been just all over the place. Yeah, Jeff, down here, the water is still pretty choppy. Take a look here. Obviously windy. We did have a brief little drizzle more than a downpour just about five minutes ago here. But as you said, not just here in Jacksonville, but around the first coast this weekend, we've seen a lot of flooding. Take a look at some of these videos from our viewers from the tides in Flagler and Jack's Beach to flooding in downtown St. Mary's, Georgia, where someone actually kayaked down the street there. There was so much water there. Roads also flooded near Huguenot Park and St. Augustine. And now is also a good time to remind you, you hear it all the time, but don't drive through those floodwaters. Turn around, don't drown. Another thing that you probably hear all the time, also you live here, most of you in this area that are uh, prone to flooding, so I don't need to tell you that. But just to let you know, as Lauren was saying, this flooding this weekend, a combination of several things, including that nor'easter. And again, as Lauren was saying tonight here, this morning in downtown and on the South Bank, that next high tide between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Reporting live on the South Bank, Kaylee Tracy, First Coast News on your side. 